Hey folks, Brett here. Let's talk about the evolutionary purpose of life. This is actually a fairly easy question, though the answer has very disturbing implications. Behind me, you'll see foxglove, which is an invasive species here in the Pacific Northwest. It's uh, digitalis, which is the source of a very important cardiac drug. You'll probably also see some bees that are pollinating it, and no doubt you'll see some mosquitoes flying around me. The truth is that all of these creatures and human beings have the same purpose, because evolutionarily there can be only one. The purpose of living creatures is to advance the spellings that they find within their genomes into the future. Now we could say it's to produce as many copies as possible in the next generation. That's not quite right, though it works as a proxy for most things. But we can say that genomes are agreements between genes at different loci to advance the interests of all of the spellings found there to the exclusion of alternative spellings that might be found in other members of the same species. Now, what does it mean that mosquitoes and bees and plants and humans all share this purpose? It means that the purpose isn't very interesting. It's generic. What is interesting is the different evolutionary machinery that we have all inherited with which to advance our spellings. Now, my argument would be there is actually one possible exception, one way in which a creature can have a different purpose but it requires us to assign that new purpose to ourselves and step away from the evolutionary imperative that has guided us for three and a half billion years. Yes, three and a half billion years is a good number. It may not be precise, but that is the period of time in which the tree of life has existed on Earth. And that means that you, as a member of the human species at the tip of the human branch, have an unbroken line of successful reproduction stretching back all the way to the first living creature. And that's an amazing winning streak. It is almost certain to come to an end for you and me and the other creatures you see in this frame within the next few generations. Most creatures do not make it. And this bottlenecking effect, this limiting of those creatures who succeed in reproducing within any cohort to a very small fraction of the total number of creatures attempting to do so, it is that bottlenecking that makes adaptive evolution happen. It reduces the total evolutionary output to only that small fraction that is very well suited and also very lucky and able to continue one more generation into the future. I hope this has been enlightening and I look forward to talking more about the implications of the evolutionary purpose of life in a future video.